Now let's look at another MSI logic circuit, which is the encoder. So in an encoder, uh, it, almost the exact opposite of a decoder, you're going to have outputs which are, as you might suspect, encoded. And you're going to have inputs which are, we'll call it, unencoded. Just meaning that the outputs typically have less ports, there's a less number of ports on the outputs than there are on the inputs. And that's because you went through an encoding process in order to try to create a, the same, represent the same information but in a more compact fashion. So there's, a, there's numerous types of encoders, but let's just look at a, uh, a one-hot binary encoder as an example of how an encoder is designed. So let's take a look at a one-hot encoder. And in this situation, encoder, in this situation, let's do a, uh, let's do a four, two, two. So in this situation, you can think of it as the output has the least number of, of lines, so it's got n, and then you're going to have a 2 to the n inputs that it can be supporting. So it's a 2 to the n to n encoder. So let's just say we had a system, I'll redraw it here with the exact number of ports. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4 inputs, and we had 1, 2 outputs. And let's just call the inputs A, B, C, and D. We'll call the outputs F. Now let's call them, uh, let's call them something different. Let's call them Y, and we'll call it Z. All right. And the behavior of this is going to be as follows. So let's say we had, we're going to list A, B, C, and D. And then we're going to list the behavior of Y and the behavior of Z. And what we're going to do is we're going to produce an output that's encoded as 0, 0 when one and only one input is asserted. So let's, let's create this encoder so the output code 0, 0 will occur when you have the input D is asserted, but no others are asserted. And then let's say that we had output 0, 1 be created when C was asserted, and none of the other inputs are asserted. And then we'll do output is produced as 1, 0 when B is asserted. And then finally, we'll have the output 1, 1 created when A is asserted, but none of the other ones. So this is, this is the truth table here, and you can kind of see this pattern of these are the signals that are asserted right here and each of those being asserted corresponds to creating this output. Okay? okay, so now we can actually go in here and say, okay, I'm gonna create a circuit to implement this. And let's do it with the classical digital design approach. Remember, we're gonna create a logic expression for each bit of the output because a logic expression only, only produces a scalar output, so it can only produce Y. And then another logic expression is needed for Z. What's interesting about this is that we have four inputs, and notice that four inputs can produce up to 16 unique codes. However, the functionality for an encoder is, is only a few of the codes are actually specified here. So we can actually take advantage of don't cares in a one-hot encoder, and we take advantage of don't cares saying that we will only respond with the values right here for these four input codes. If you produce any of the other codes, who knows what you're gonna get over here? All we care about is that for these specific input codes, we'll produce these four outputs. And then it's up to the kind of the input person or the input to restrict their input codes to only these values. So let's take a look at using don't cares and let's produce the logic for Y. And I'm gonna have four inputs. So I actually have a four input k-map. And I'll draw my 16 cells here. And then I have A, B, C, and D. And I'll go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now let's start putting in the outputs. So we're going to take, we're doing Y right now. So what we are concerned about is building a logic circuit that produces these outputs. Notice though, we only have 0, 0, 0, 1 specified as a 0. And then we have 0, 1 or excuse me, 0, 0, 1, 0 specified as a 0. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 0 specified as a 1. And then we have 1, 0, 0, 0 specified as a 1. So we can, we can put in those specific outputs that we're trying to design. And then for the rest of them, let's just put them down as don't cares. Because we really don't care. We're going to say that 
the input code has to be restricted to only those four values. So we can use that to our advantage to minimize logic. Look how much we can minimize this. If I go to circle this one, the largest prime implicant I can form is amongst those eight cells. And when I go to pick up this one, the largest prime implicant I can form is those eight cells. So I can actually write this expression as y is equal to, and in this situation, the circle covers a region where a is both a 0 and a 1, so it's excluded. It covers a circle where b is a 1, so it's included, uncomplemented. And then c and d, the circle covers a region where c and d are both 0 and 1, so c and d are excluded. Then for this prime implicant, I'm going to have the circle covers a region where a is a 1, so it's included, uncomplemented. The circle covers a region where b is both a 0 and a 1, so it's excluded. And then the circle covers a region where c and d are both 0 and 1, so it's excluded. So these are my two prime implicants. I OR them together, and there's my logic expression for y. Okay, now let's take a look at the logic expression for z. So in this situation, we do the exact same thing. We're going to create a k map. And I got my 16 cells here. And then I have A, B, C, and D. And 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to create an output which produces these four outputs. Or I'm going to create a circuit that creates them. So I've got a 0. In 0, 0, 0, 1 creates a 0. 0, 0, 1, 0 creates a 1. 0, 1, 0, 0 creates a 0, and then 1, 0, 0, 0 creates a 1. So now I have this situation. And what do I do with all the other unspecified input codes? Well, let's just treat them as don't cares in order to create the most minimal logic. So in this situation, when I go to pick up this one, the largest prime implicant I can find is those bottom eight cells. And when I go to pick up this one, I pick up those guys. Well, we already figured out that this prime implicant for these eight cells right here is actually equal to A. And now we just have to say, what is the prime implicant for these bottom eight cells? So the circle covers a region where A and B are both zeros and ones, so they're gone. And then the circle covers a region where C is a one, so it's included. And then D is a one and a zero, so it's, it's gone. So our logic expression is C ordered with A. So now I have my two logic expressions. So y is equal to b ordered with a, z is equal to c ordered with a. So when I actually draw my final encoder, it's very, very simple. So it's y and z, and they're simply driven by OR gates. Two OR gates, and I have a coming in, and then b coming into the first one. So that's this logic expression. And then I have a and c coming into this one. And then that's my circuit. So I've got A, B, C, and D coming in, one, two, three, four, and they are driven in as followed. Now notice, that, notice some really interesting things here. First of all, D isn't even used. So D is not used in this, and why is it not used? And it turns out that it's just when you put the don't cares in there, it optimizes out, it minimizes out. So you don't actually need it. These two OR gates will produce one and one based up and provide the output code for D. So that's, they're going to do that for you. And then what we're going to have is, so oh, so, I'm sorry. So D is not used. So you say, well, what about this? I said that wrong. What about the situation where D is asserted? Well, when D is asserted, notice what the output codes are. There's 0 and 0. So when D is asserted, its output code is 0 and 0. So it's not actually an assertion, so it doesn't need anything to drive it to a 1. Okay. Now this makes some gross assumptions. Number one, it assumes that you don't care about all the other possible input codes. It also doesn't handle a situation where what if two inputs are asserted at the same time? So there's no priority given. So if you ever asserted two input codes at the same time, like C and D were both asserted, this thing would produce some output based upon how you created the prime implicates with the don't cares. So if you wanted to have some priority, you could actually go in here and expand this to do a priority encoder. And so the number of encoders is, is boundless. There's, a, there's tons of them. But this kind of walks you through from start to finish how to create a one-hot encoder. And it's the same design philosophy as you do any other types of encoder.